Hello and welcome to Broward Teen News. We're here at Cooper City High School to take a look into our community. Stay tuned to see a special Cooper City event. An individual's passion for photography. How one local church is supporting an important cause. And more. I'm Adam Avon. And I'm Rebecca Salomon. And Broward Teen News starts now. now. In 1959, Cooper City was founded, and now every year its citizens gather to celebrate and honor its creation with food, fun, and festivities. Jordan Winnick got the chance to see just how Cooper City's annual Founders Day went this past year. 63 years ago, in 1959, Morris Cooper founded Cooper City. In present day, residents recognize its creation in the annual Founders Day event. The city is amazing with the schools and the people that are a part of it, so it's just great. It's a, a great way to be grateful for where you are. The people of Cooper City come together every year to show pride for their community. The event is started off with a parade and ends with a concert, food, and fun for the family at the park. I like the parade because I love because I like squirting people with the water um, gun things, and it's really fun. Cooper City is worth celebrating because it, it really is someplace special. I've, I've been living here for almost 10 years. My wife grew up here. Uh, she came back to live here and to raise our family, and, and that's why we're here, because it really is a, a wonderful community. Without a doubt, Cooper City residents continue to care for their community. For CTV News, I'm Jordan Winnick. Founders Day is all about the sense of community and happiness that can be found here in Cooper City. And Breck and Mayer got to visit another business in Cooper City, providing its customers and employees with pure happiness. Hidden in the depths of Davie lies Happy Farms, a place dedicated to bringing a smile to its visitors' faces with the help of their furry friends. Happy Farms is home to a wide variety of animals and one employee couldn't be happier to take care of them. Yeah, and she loves to give kisses. I started off by wanting to like find a place where I can be with like animals because I really enjoy their company. So I found this place and I really did wonders because it's a beautiful place and there's tons of sweet animals who like to be cuddled and pet and it's just an amazing experience. This is Ferdinand. Hi. Starting off as a volunteer, Cheryl has been with Happy Farms for over a year now. But when the offer to work full time came along, she couldn't resist. Before Happy Farm, I used to go to school a lot, and so I wouldn't have time to like do things that I like to do. And now I'm like homeschooling, so I have more time to come to the farm. I think before I came to Happy Farm, I wasn't as happy. And then once I started joining and I saw all the animals and I started taking care of them, it really did like bring pure happiness to my life. It's easy to see that there's only happiness here at Happy Farms. From horses to goats, you're guaranteed a wild ride. For CTV News, this is Brecken Mayer. If you're looking to meet some more animals, South Florida parks are just the place. That's right, Rebecca. And Topakiki Youngni, also known as T.Y. Park, is known for both its beautiful scenery and wildlife. Merritt Kovard met one T.Y. visitor with a unique hobby who's sharing his love for nature. I'm here at Topakiji Youngni Park which means gathering place in Seminole. And for 196 species of birds, that's exactly what this is. Strolling along the park, I found a man who told me all about them. I mean, it looked like he was nibbling some lichen off of a tree. I make my living as a marine life photographer. I travel around the world looking for engaging subjects to photograph. However, in the past two years, world travel has become quite impractical. What I do to keep myself sane is I find myself coming here to the park and for the first time in my life paying attention to birds because it is just a beautiful place. They're protected here and I can find lots of interesting species that were previously unknown to me. Well, it's one of the essential elements of being a wildlife photographer is that the most valuable thing you can have, other than luck, is patience. I really, I, I mean, I can find positive aspects in the wilds of Galapagos, 100 feet underwater, and I can also find things to appreciate in the New York City subway system. And I'm just trying to capture a moment 
and hopefully share it with others. From under the sea to up in the sky, there's no telling where life might take us. But for Barry, it led him straight to T.Y. Park. For CTV Extra, I'm Merrick Kovard. Barry Kulik isn't the only person to turn a passionate hobby into a living. Here's one woman and her story with the challenging sport of CrossFit. When it comes to easy sports, CrossFit does not fit the mold. Yet many people think that this sport is simple. After training for eight years and competing at the state level, one CrossFit enthusiast understands how rewarding this challenging sport is. To be a woman in a male-dominated sport feels amazing because you come into some of these classes and I will outperform, outlift them, and it makes me feel personally good. One of the many joys of CrossFit for Amber is being able to welcome women of all ages into the sport, and amongst that crowd is her daughter. I love that my daughter's doing CrossFit because it does empower her and it's going to give her a better sense of body image. So now she's here in environments where you're seeing women that are strong, that are fast, that are developing muscles. And that one's great. CrossFit has given Amber the chance to build her strength, stay healthy, and encourage women. But maybe most importantly, it's provided an outlet for her underlying struggles. I was in the Army at the time, and even still, we didn't do anything like what I saw CrossFit was doing. CrossFit has improved my life significantly through managing my PTSD. It helps me with my anger management. It is my stress relief during the day and it's for my mental sanity. While CrossFit athletes make it look easy, Amber knows that it isn't. However, she knows that all her hard work will make it worth it in the end. For CTV News, this has been Brecken Mayer. Big or small, acts of kindness can have lasting effects on everyone they reach. As well as having a unique impact on both the giver and receiver. Brandon Nolan has more on how being kind can make a difference. Giving back to the community is done in many ways, but one man took it upon himself to go the extra step when it comes to helping others. The Shut Off My Back is an organization I started approximately nine years ago where I go around collecting clothing from friends, family members, and strangers as well, and I uh, bring it back to my home. I sort it all out, I'll uh, load it up into my van, and then I'll go out on the street and hand it out to people on the street, and go to where there's a homeless population. I open up the back of my van, people come up to me, and I give them whatever they need. Well, Toro took something he felt strongly about and has built this organization from the ground up. Many years ago, uh, a friend of mine asked me if I had any shirts that I could give to her because she treats people with dual disorders and the, she would see them with the same clothes all the time. So I gave her maybe a dozen shirts that I wasn't wearing and then she asked again and I gave her more. And then I wound up asking a, my brother, my sister, then I put a, a post on Facebook and asked friends and that's kind of how it started. The shirt off my back is making a huge impact in South Florida and it also serves as a learning opportunity for those who volunteer. Okay, I think it's important for young kids to realize that there are people that are less fortunate than them. And when they get to see it hands-on, it really impacts them and they really want to get on board and start helping people. And uh, to me, that's very inspiring to lead by example. One of the reasons I do this is because of the way I was raised. My parents taught me that if you can help someone who can't help themselves, you help them. It's kind of a catchphrase with me that people have gotten to know me by is, Thomas, why do you do this? Because I can. Donating shirts to shorts to any other clothing accessory, Voltaro gives back to those in need. If you have an opportunity to perform a random act of kindness, do it. Take it. For CTV News, I'm Brandon Nolan. Acts of kindness can affect those near and far. And for the past couple months, one local church has been doing its part to spread kindness all the way to Ukraine. Chase Parada has the story. For 30 years, the St. Nicholas Ukrainian Orthodox Church has been a haven for the Ukrainian population of Cooper City, providing a space where they can connect to their roots. I spoke to Salomia Paragovska, a churchgoer who moved to Cooper City when she was 20 from her hometown of Lviv, Ukraine. Well, this is like my church where I usually come to. We come every Sunday, so all the Ukrainians got to meet and, you know, have fun together. But right now, you know, this is not fun. This is uh, very different than that. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the church's ballroom 
which was once used for celebration, has transformed into a storage room for supplies and the former visitors to volunteers spending their days collecting and packaging supplies for their people back home. We have volunteers working all day long from nine to nine. Yesterday, I was here all day, and the entire day people would just come, just trying to help as much as they can because they understand that that's what Ukraine needs right now. But my mom and my dad and my brother are still there. And almost everyone I talk to, their family, everyone is still in Ukraine. Yeah. It's been really tough. Yeah. While the situation is tough, the strength and resilience of the Ukrainian people, as well as the support of the community, will carry them through these tough times. For more information on how you can help, visit the church's website, ukrainianorthodox.church. For CTV News, I'm Chase Parada. With BTN, we get the chance to work with other schools to get an even deeper look into what's going on in our community. Here's a story from Doral Academy's Firebird TV on a farmer's market in Miami with vendors selling a taste of their own culture. The beauty of a city like Miami comes in a package of diversity and culture. In this farmer's market, a variety of businesses from all over the world come together and show appreciation for their homeland. These business owners are the perfect example of what it's like to take risks, embrace change, and flourish in the present. And the farmer's market, I think it's really awesome because I really think the farmer's market helps us just um, embrace the present and be together because especially after that long break that we took with the pandemic and we're still taking now, we didn't really have the opportunity to explore so many different choices of foods and just so many di different opportunities. Due to losing my job during the pandemic, I made the risky and spontaneous decision to open this business. Being able to embrace my passion for baking has allowed me to live the life I've always dreamed of. My advice to others is to live life in the moment and prioritize your happiness over everything. The farmer's market is a place to locate small businesses that utilize their knowledge in order to be successful. However, it has not been an easy journey for all these vendors, but definitely a fulfilling one. Now that I have come to the United States with the opportunity to set up shop in this farmer's market, I can demonstrate the beauty of Venezuela through my food and I can pass on the joy of generations to present customers. Um, I think that in the, farm, in the farm markets, we appreciate the moment, okay, we live the now, we live with the family, with our kids, and this time, this, this kind of places, this kind of markets or, you know, parks, they help us to embrace that moment. Signing off from Student Television Network, I'm Samantha Gutierrez. This past year, schools across the nation traveled to Long Beach, California for the Student Television Network National Convention. At STN, students competed in various film and news-based categories all under a time crunch. And South Florida schools were definitely there to win, bringing home a total of 42 awards. Here's a story from Josh Heidhouse on the art scene in Long Beach from CTV's very own First Place Morning Show. The arts are widely underfunded, but the Arts Council for Long Beach is helping local artists through this challenge with grants and advocacy programs. I think the grants have been instrumental, especially with the recovery from COVID. When COVID happened and everything shut down, we went immediately into recovery mode and started several funds for artists. Last year, we gave out over $450,000 to individual artists um, to support them. As a director of the organization and an artist herself, Lisa truly understands the needs and challenges in the art world. Even with that funding, it's still not enough. It's still really difficult for artists. So without having any of that, it would really make it difficult. But artists are survivors and they'll find a way to make money and, and do what they want to do no matter what, if they're really passionate about it. But I think our vision is is to kind of take away that poverty mentality with artists where it's like the suffering artist um, archetype and really artists should be valued as any other type of um, employment. Although the Arts Council for Long Beach is still in need of more resources, the funding and grants provided to them by the city and state governments is truly allowing artists to express themselves. For CTV Extra, this has been Josh Heidhouse. One of the many competitions at STN is Nat Package. With Nat Package, students are challenged with the task of making a segment utilizing only natural sound and interviews to tell a story. Here's a Nat Package story from Firebird TV on one man's unique business. 
Good morning, STN. I'm Samantha Gutierrez, and it is quite obvious that the Long Beach area is known for its beautiful views, clear skies, and blue waters. However, that is not the only thing that attracts its daily visitors. Long Beach Shoreline is the perfect place for customers and vendors to come together and demonstrate what it truly means to give service with a smile. So I'm uh, the sanitation engineer on this boat, and um, the owner likes his uh, boat, you know, top notch and ready to go if he ever wants to go out. And definitely brings a smile to my owner's face when he sees his own boat clean like this. It's never looked like this before, but uh, you know, we all contribute to uh, keeping the boats clean, and it makes Marina look a lot cleaner, more welcoming, more homey. It's really just bright and colorful in here. I. I feel like I get to connect with customers and spend time with them a little bit and talk about candy, interact with them. It's all pretty fun to do. It brings me a smile to be able to see my customers happy and fulfilled with the service. The shoreline includes an abundance of diversity in the services offered. From restaurants to sweet shops, this area keeps vendors and customers alike as happy as can be. So far, all the shop owners and all the store owners have been actually really quite pleasurable to be around. And everything's bold and bright and vibrant and beautiful and love the shop so far. Everybody is just so happy and, and vibrant and everybody's all about hellos and, and everybody's active and engaged. And where I come from, we just don't see that very often. So we really like to submerge ourselves into that. And that, that's why we're having an enjoyable time here. Signing off from Student Television Network, I'm Samantha Gutierrez. From art galleries to boat maintenance, Long Beach offers so many different businesses for so many people. Here's another story from Firebird TV on a unique store in Long Beach. The Hangout is um, a female collective consisting of a few small businesses. There's one main owner, and then we support a bookstore, Belcanto Books, the Golden Garden, a plant store. This is definitely an open space for um, growth and potential. Um, everyone really strives to help each other. The Hangout is just one big melting pot in terms of art and creation. I think the collective works so well because we have a mutually shared uh, passion for what we do in terms of artistry and connection. Being able to take that over here into this store has been an amazing dream. Um, it's really been able to be really seamless working with all of the other women here and being able to take in everybody else's visions and dreams and, and be able to incorporate everything into something that's very cohesive and beautiful. Stuff gets done around here when you have females running the business, it feels like. 100%, we're all kind of artists ourselves. We want to take care of other people's stuff, promote their stuff, and you know, just kind of put good karma back in the world. And you know, we do have a lot of respect for products. We want to take care of things. This is home goods, so. And where we're getting our product from is also another way that we take care of our business. We try to be locally sourced, organic. A lot of stuff we'll make um, by hand ourselves here in the store. It's more personal because everything that we make is, is a one of a kind. Uh, we remember the faces that come in here. We remember the people who interact with us and get excited with us. And in that aspect, I think that the community helps us too, for sure. From playing instruments to singing songs, music is a major part of so many people's lives. I got the chance to check out how one music school in Long Beach is sharing the value of music and taking care of business. My name is Nick Dollinger and I am the CFO slash secretary of Jam and Music. Oh, nice! Jam Music is a music studio in general, but particularly voice, guitar, uh, piano, I think I would say are our top three offerings. But we also offer ukulele, we rent instruments. It's just an all-around friendly uh, music business, essentially. Music can help kids uh, in many ways, not just in enjoyment and pleasure. It just, it gives you an extra language that you can speak, an extra means of expression. If kids are feeling, for instance, depressed or, or just sad, I feel like having that ability to express yourself gives them something they can do at any time. And it gives them a sense of, I can do this. I have something that I can do that I'm, I'm good at that makes me feel good. And it doesn't matter if the world's watching, you know. It is of prime importance in terms of taking care of business that we make sure that kids are enjoying their lessons, that they're enjoying music. Otherwise, this just becomes drudgery. We always encourage a sense of fun, a sense of pleasure, and a sense of just general well-being, uh, no matter what the, the state of the student is. That's just kind of our way of saying, we're here for you. We're here to provide for you, and this is, this is our one and, and only goal. PSA with an accent. That's a photo thing.
Mr. Fortune. Long Beach is a city for the arts, and those young musicians could one day take the stage at Terrace Theatre. Established in 1978, the Terrace Theatre has specialized in showing everything from local theatrical performances to national celebrity acts. And I got the chance to go backstage to learn a little bit about what makes this theatre special. Theatre goers travel each and every year to watch performers and artists express their talents in unique ways. But who would have thought that one of the most iconic venues in the country will be right here in Long Beach, California. Assistant General Manager John Braun showed us around the facility and told us why the arts are such a powerful creative outlet. This, this theater here is 3,052 seats. Big favorite of comedy, this is where Richard Pryor oh, wow. did his famous show in 1979 yeah. that really kind of started the revolution. Seinfeld plays here, Tom oh, wow. Segura just played here a couple of nights ago. So the comedians like to come here and, and play this theater because of that. Mind if we go backstage? Yeah. Usually the headliner is here. Brian Wilson, the Beach Boys was. Ah. Right? Even, so if I was hypothetically the headliner of huh? the show. You'd be right there, sitting right, right in that chair. They're probably gonna kill me for tell, telling you, but Hacks oh. just filmed in this hallway. You're gonna see it uh, in awesome. the second season. They, they filmed the first season here also. The arena during COVID, it was used as a soundstage. This is famous that the Eagles played their last concert and broke up here. Wow. This is, this is so cool. Our private tour was super cool, but John can't wait for these seats to be filled very soon. It's getting closer and closer. I mean, uh, it's it's just good to see him, you know, so. John also said how filled with joy he is that the arts community is finally getting back to normal, and I definitely felt that joy here at Terrace Theater today. And from CTV Extra, I'm Adam Aven. Well, that wraps it up for us here from Cooper City. I'm Adam Aven. And I'm Rebecca Salomon. If you want to see stories like these and more, make sure you like our Broward Teen News Facebook page. See you next time.